I am super excited, guys. I just told you who my guest is. And I know that you're also really excited. We're going to talk about everything. We'll talk about finance. We'll talk about his life. We'll talk about what he loves to do. I hear he loves TV. He can watch TV for like a whole day, but he still gets his things done. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Give a high five. <laughs> How you doing? I'm well, thank you. It feels so good to have you on the show. And let me tell you a quick secret. I always thought you were very uptight before I met you. But you know, just seeing him, he's such a free spirit. And it feels like I've known you for a very long time. I'm super honored to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. And um, you'll, be the, you'll be the first to assume yeah. a lot about me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make assumptions. Mm -hmm. Like we all do about things we don't know about. So True. that's one thing about, uh, about life that interests me. Mm -hmm. Assumptions. Assumptions. And you know, they say you live and die by your assumptions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So be careful what assumptions you make. True that. Um, yeah. yeah. But let's dig into it straight. How was growing up like for you? Ajabota, Ajapako, Ajachis. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the growing up was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, first, I was lucky to be born to amazing parents. Mm -hmm. um, I started with my dad. My dad was a banker. Okay. And he worked in the central bank. Before then, worked on the cocoa board in Nigeria, mm -hmm. in the produce department. He went, they went, switch careers, went to the banking, mm -hmm. where he was director of HR and personnel yeah. um, at Central Bank. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was a self-made man. Mm -hmm. he, he sent himself to school, yeah. um, and he raised his entire family and village. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with a man who believed in building people. People. And so throughout my house, growing up in my house, I, even though it was an eight-bedroom house, my mm -hmm. dad built. And, uh, on the mainland. Wow. At any point in time, we had no less than 25, 30 people living with us. Wow. So my dad always, my dad gave us the, 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 the life lesson mm -hmm. of being your brother's keeper, keeper. of learning, mm -hmm. of investing in the community, yeah. of working hard. My dad woke up every day before 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. He had his morning prayers and a Muslim. Wow. We'll all pray together before. Well, can we pause that you're a Muslim? Because <laughs> the Muslim. whole world thinks you're a Christian. I'm, but I'm spiritual. I'm okay. more spiritual than religious. I, okay. There are big difference. I, I, I believe in God. Okay. My relationship with God is extremely strong. I read the Bible very well. I know the Bible very well. Okay. I'm a good um, friend who are Christians and bishops and okay. pastors, mm -hmm. same as imams and Muslims. But would you say you picked finance from your dad? So I picked finance from my family. Okay. Uh, my dad being a central banker, of course. I remember when I was six or seven years old, mm -hmm. my dad used to test my absolutely accounting money. <laughs> with, with Jimmy Bond's account, how much is okay. there, you know? Just let so my, dad, my dad tried. Um, and when we were young, actually, mm -hmm. Dad is, to, dad is to try and get us involved in a few things yeah. he was doing. So even when Dad retired in Central Bank mm -hmm. in 1988, yeah. I used to go with him to a few of his meetings there. So mm -hmm. I always had an on the eye that I felt to understand um, creation um, and yeah. entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. My mom was an entrepreneur. Yeah. I think an entrepreneur at heart. My dad was the manager. Mm -hmm. So those, that, that fusion made finance thing. Yeah. My siblings, my, mm -hmm. I have, you know, four of my siblings are in finance. Yeah. Four or five of them are in finance. And uh, they're accountants, they're very successful accountants mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I, I grew up around people that understood entrepreneurship, Leadership, business, yeah. and finance. finance. But I started engineering. Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt, first, of course, when you're young, mm -hmm. you're good in math, physics, chemistry. Mm -hmm. Were well, you love, very good in math? I was very Should, good I math. Your, should I test your. Uh, Should I test. My nickname, <laughs> a lot of people know this, my yeah. nickname in high school was called Nelcom. I was that good okay. in physics. <laughs> this coming oh, wow, I see. So when I went to high school, coming coming there, I was yeah. doing the math, physics, and chemistry and okay. biology. Mm -hmm. I moved to do banking. Yeah. I worked for Grand Trust Bank. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, while working, while doing in banking, I started doing my IT exams. Yeah. So I'm a I'm Microsoft certified. Okay. I'm also school certified. I also completed my CFA exams. Mm -hmm. CFA is a like gold standard in investment banking called yeah. chartered. Actually, so far, I go for my career, moving from engineering, mm -hmm. I did IT, I did finance. Wow. And I was lucky I did those things in the late 1990s, 2000. That was when yeah. Nigeria was growing. Africa was still growing. Telecom was coming, so my IT engineering experience helped yeah. me. Uh, equity investment was, was happening. My finance experience helped me. Mm -hmm. My bank experience helped me. So I was just lucky enough yeah. to get into finance because I, I was curious mm -hmm. to know how I could be a better engineer, yeah. a better Pressing at creating products. Yeah. And I realized that my gap was in finance. Mm -hmm. And that's how I entered finance. Wow, amazing. I'm totally enjoying this conversation, but we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about platform capital. He has a book as well, best selling. We'll talk about that as well. Don't go anywhere. This is the album. 
<laughs> You're welcome back. You know, I bring you the favorite, your best people on the show. And trust me, this conversation is something that I am totally loving. But let's talk about Africa. I know that you are very big on Africa and Africans. Yes, we are black, we're Africans, but I feel like you take it extreme. What's your passion about Africa? So I'm obsessed with Africa. Mm -hmm. It's not anything big on it. It's, yeah. not it's an yeah. obsession for me. Mm -hmm. um, um, because I think a lot of people don't understand what Africa means, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how we came about. Um, but um, I think my obsession with Africa stems mm -hmm. from my deep appreciation for history. History. Um, the history of the world, for example. Yeah. How the world was formed 4.6 billion years ago, mm -hmm. right? And now we evolved over continent from the last supercontinent called Pangea yeah. to this current five economy that we have today. Mm -hmm. And now Africa is the center of this current, current civilization. Yeah. The current civilization we have in the world today, mm -hmm. and this is the first civilization, other, before humans, other, other, other creatures have been on this earth. With the whole Japa thing that we hear, Nigerian youths, you know, wanting to leave Nigeria because they feel that, oh, you know, you cannot make it in Africa. How does that make you feel? Being someone I love it. You, you love it? I thought you know with Japa. Okay. Migration has been the core of humanity for a long time. Mm -hmm. You see, when people Japa or they migrate from yeah. Nigeria and South Africa, they export our culture with them. Okay. They take our food. I can eat wache in the US. <laughs> can eat okra in London. Yeah. They love fries in France. They take our food. They take our dressing. Mm -hmm. Now, when you dress, when you wear, when I wear a lot of my traditional clothes abroad. Yeah. I don't cut out the time. They take our music, Bonner Boy. They take uh, Bande Cole, the band. They take yeah. whiskey abroad. They take our artwork. They, we are teaching the world again what the world forgot. Yeah. So, and when people go, they're also going to learn new things. Okay. Now, a lot of people say, oh, they're not saying the right thing, why right? are people leaving yeah. our government? And not leave government alone first. Okay. When people go, they go and acquire skills. Mm -hmm. They go and become better. They export our culture. Okay. And they then look back on and send what they've learned back here. Okay. They eat capital, they eat knowledge, mm -hmm. and we do a handshake with them. Mm -hmm. And together we'll change the world back to the Africa it should be. Yeah. So, Migration has not been about us. Listen, in the hundred years ago, the Italians moved their mass from Italy to America. To America. Mm -hmm. The Irish moved before them. Yeah. Even before them, Africans migrated. The first migration happened about hundred thousand years ago from Africa mm -hmm. into Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. right? So Africans have been migrating for hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of years, either for reason of looking for a new land, mm -hmm. either looking for war. Mm -hmm. See, migration is about humanity looking for the best opportunities. Yeah. So Jack Ma mm -hmm. is not new. Yeah. It's just social media in the I turned everything that was regular yeah. into big deal. Okay. Jack Ma is not new. People have been migrating. Italians, America. USA was created by people migrating from Europe yeah. to America. Okay, but can I ask you a quick question? And you'll be honest with me this question. You know, there's a saying that Nigerian youths believe that it's very difficult to make it to Nigeria. Do you think that, um, you know, Nigeria still gives the opportunity for a Nigerian youth to be able to work legitimately and still be something? This is a black man's paradise. Nigeria is black man's paradise. As tough as it is, yeah. this is the only country in the world where you can be great by just being, and the color of your skin does not matter. Okay. The richest black man is Nigerian. The number two richest black man is Nigerian. I can give you an example. Beyond that, Nigeria, let me first tell you, mm -hmm. it is tough in Nigeria. Yeah. Let's call it spade a spade. Mm -hmm. It is tough in Ghana. Yes. It is tough in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It is tough everywhere. It is tough in the US. Yeah. It is not easy anywhere. It can be easier mm -hmm. because those countries have systems in place yeah. that support that, that, that creates like a social net, a social infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But those things come at a cost as well. Yeah. When people leave Nigeria and go and work in the US or UK, they start paying big taxes, yeah. they start choking. Well, that thing you like, mm -hmm. at a cost. And when we Nigeria and Ghana, you don't pay that taxes, yeah. you insult government. Something must give, right? Must give. But beyond that, the continent, whether it's Nigeria, Ghana, mm -hmm. Senegal, South Africa, Angola, is the richest continent in the world. We have 60% of the world's farmable land. We can feed the world. We give the world 80 of the world's cocoa production. We give yeah. the world chocolate. Mm -hmm. We give the world 60 of the cobalt that is for phones and everything. Yeah. Gold. Everything we are rich in resources. Mm -hmm. That means resource-wise, we are in Wakanda. Yeah. For real. I like that. One, <laughs> let's not confuse that. Yeah. That we are not adding value to it locally. Mm -hmm. That we are not that we are exporting it is a challenge. Yeah. The the, the, the thing is what we call a Dutch disease. Mm -hmm. Is that when you have resources, you are poorer because you don't add value. It's a it's, it's an economic term. 
if we added value to ourselves, mm -hmm. let me give you an example. Where cocoa value, cocoa industry is about eight billion dollars. Mm -hmm. If up to that, chocolate is hundred billion. Mm -hmm. So we export co co cocoa by chocolate ten yeah. times. Do add value. Look at our crude. We have so much, so much crude. We export crude, we buy petrol five times. Yeah. We export gold, we buy jewelry, insanity. Yeah. We export cutting, we buy fashion. We export cobalt, we buy phones. Yeah. Imagine if we don't export those things mm -hmm. and add them by locally and produce them, we will save foreign currency, mm -hmm. we will create jobs, a lot will change. Yes. So first, however, what makes Africa beautiful, mm -hmm. gorgeous, Africa the future, mm -hmm. are the people. The people. People like you. Yeah. Ghanaians, Nigerians, Senegalese, yeah. Mauritanians. We are the youngest population in the world. Mm -hmm. Average age of 18, 4.4 billion people younging, getting younger. We are yeah. making babies. Nobody's not making babies except us. <laughs> and COVID did not help us. We yeah. said that we are more babies than COVID. <laughs> One, we are educating mm -hmm. and skilling. Yeah. Now, before, education used to be in the classroom. Now we are celebrating mm -hmm. the diversity in our gig and the economy. Mm -hmm. Right now, you can go to school and be successful, or you can be you can do lashes, they call it lash tech. Yeah. You can do hair. So many things. You can yeah. do hairs. You can sing. You can play football. You can do camera. Yeah. You can actually make money doing anything in a world where skill acquisition yeah. and knowledge are now merged mm -hmm. and separated from pure education in classroom. Mm -hmm. So, an African being creative people, mm -hmm. being people that also have what I call the village system where each one teach one, we collaborate. Yeah. We learn from each other, we collaborate. So, we're acquiring skills mm -hmm. that the world needs. So, we're young, acquiring skills, mm -hmm. and we are hungry. We're playing catch up. Yes, we need everything. Yes. We need food. We need light, ele 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 energy. In Ghana, I call it Dumso. Yeah. In Nigeria, I call it Nepal. Yeah. In South Africa, I call it Low Shedi. <laughs> There's no light on the continent. We need energy. Yeah. We need energy. We need good shoes. We need food. We need everything. So we, that's, so that's, a, that's a gap. Mm -hmm. So young people who are acquiring skills mm -hmm. to be productive, yeah. to have capital. Now, I guess I'm working remotely for companies abroad. Sure. So we're making creating wealth gradually. Mm -hmm. That money cannot be spent on what we consume locally. Okay. Why do you think the old world is trying to sell to us on the continent? Because the youngest population, okay, the younger, in the next 30 years, mm -hmm. two in five human beings will be African. Three in five will be black. So, and, and, so we, are, we, are, we are younging, we are skilling, mm -hmm. we are scaling, we are learning, we are networking, we are traveling, we are exposing ourselves. What is not beautiful about the continent? And we are exporting it. Yeah. The US exported their culture to the old world in the 70s. Jerry Calls, mm -hmm. the music, yeah. R&B, Michael Jackson, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. How do you think the biggest company in the world became great? Company? They exported their country's products into that country. Now, in the last 10 years, Chinese companies, Asian companies, yeah. until we take our own African companies globally, yeah. I'm missing the point, and it's that Afrobeat. Afrobeat has shown that we can export Definitely. a product. Then tech, fintech is coming. Yeah. Health tech will come. You will go there. Media yeah. will go. Nollywood, is number two in the world for reason. Exactly. We are going to teach the world what they forgot. You know, you cannot watch this and not love Africa. I just love, you know, I don't want to say it's a passion. It's more than a passion, you know, and it's just beautiful to a lot of Nigerian youth watching this, not even Nigeria, the whole of Africa. This is beautiful. Like, I'm African, but I'm carried away just listening to you. Thank you. For you, you were a very successful person. Now, let's go down to business. And it's not easy, you know, coming down this road. I know there were some challenges. There were some times you got up and you're like, can I do this? Can I be this boss? Can I be this rich man that I am today? So what was the breaking point for you? So you assume that I'm successful. I don't know what that means. I know you are successful. <laughs> okay. I, I You're think, sitting in this amazing office. I, I think it's not for a poor man. <laughs> well, I don't know. So, so I think poverty and wealth is a mind, state of mind. Mm -hmm. And I think success and failure is also, also a state of mind. Yeah. Um, I think for me, you must define success to understand what successful. I'm not successful yet. I'm a work in progress. Okay. That's it. That means I'm working to my work, my goal in life. Mm -hmm. And I'll, and I'll define what you success share, means. But will you share this goal for me? Because if you are saying you're not successful, then what am I going to say? I will tell you at the end of what I'm about to say. Okay. Um, so that's very important that you know. I'll tell you what success means to me. Mm -hmm. That's one. Entrepreneurship, though, is not success. Okay. It can lead to success. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is tough. When you say that I'm successful, I'm here. I'm, today, I'm failing more than I'm winning. Wow. You see, and you can speak, every entrepreneur in the world will tell you this. 
every day is a lifetime. Every day is a battle. Yeah. People see your glory, they don't know your story. True. People see your glass house, they think that everything inside is glass. They know some of it is, is, is concrete. Yeah. Wow. People see you in your cars and they think they are accommodated. They, 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 they know that your car is on, is on empty, your, your floor. True. You can never judge a book by its cover. It's cover. One. So even at, I haven't done this for over 25, 27 years. I'm still learning. I'm still failing. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling. I'm still miss, missing bills. I still have liabilities I'm not paying. Yeah. I have people owing me money. I'm owing people. Mm -hmm. I have people, I have things I'm struggling with. Yeah. Nobody ever gets to say, I'm done. Look at the richest man in the world, Elon Musk. Yeah. As whatever he was, he took on Twitter and it's the fight of his life, yeah. right? Because of his fight in Twitter, he's selling some stake in Tesla, I believe, I yeah. think. He's, he's lost value in Tesla shares if you, if you follow to it online. Yeah. But his fight to make Twitter work. You think that I'm, now, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Major fan. I think he's just a genius. He's yeah. probably the best of our time, right? Mm -hmm. He built six, seven successful big companies. Mm -hmm. You believe he has a formula for success. Yeah. You believe that he can't fail. But he's having a go at Twitter and it's challenging. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? Success is not final. That is failure. Mm -hmm. Fatal. Right? Yeah. It's a work in progress. Every new challenge mm -hmm. requires a new level of thinking, mm -hmm. a new approach, a new way of a new way of, of using your resources mm -hmm. and finding the resources you need. And one thing I've learned is never assume that what worked last time will work this time. So to answer your question, I'm still learning myself. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling. At Platform, mm -hmm. we're trying to build the biggest investment firm on the continent. Yeah. We've made a lot of progress. And we have I'm over 100 companies that we've invested in. Yeah. We're Africa's most active tech investment firm today. Mm -hmm. We're investing in the US. We're investing in Europe. We're investing in Latin America. We're investing in Africa. But we also, and we're doing other sectors like energy, like tech. Yeah. The are areas also struggling with. I work with an amazing team of people. My, my colleagues are my, I mean, I'm just lucky because if they don't have a job here, they have a life. I cannot hire people to work with me. Mm -hmm. I have to hire them to work with me. Because a job, they can get paid better, more regularly, do other yeah. things. Or we can build an Africa that we are all proud of together. True. An Africa where our kids, our grandkids, look back and say that, thank you for building the future. Yeah. So for me, it's important that we define that as um, every day, and I can tell you things that struggle with every day, mm -hmm. you struggle with everything. Entrepreneurship is about optimizing resources, yeah. whether human, mm -hmm. financial, technical, mm -hmm. reputational, yeah. all the various resources available to you. It's about optimizing, balancing them in a way where you are able to, uh, you are able to execute your goals, execute your plan, mm -hmm. and achieve your goals. And that can be easy. Mm -hmm. That is the, it's almost what they call dynamic, it's ongoing, and you yeah. have to keep iterating it. For me, though, when you ask me what the success means to me, yeah. I don't want to be the richest person in the grave. Mm -hmm. So money is not what success means to me. True. Money is nice to have. Yeah. But first, as a principle, every money we have in this, and I'll make my colleagues tell you, I have a principle for money. Any income you earn, mm -hmm. we cut it into three. Mm -hmm. A third, yeah. goes to the business, your cost, your investment. Yeah. And that cord, and that thought goes to my charities, mm -hmm. churches, mm -hmm. mosques, yeah. foundations, and family. And the thought goes to all of us enjoying that money. <laughs> my colleague, my friend, because it's, Enjoy it's, life. It's, it's the money that you spend, that yeah. you have. Yeah. Money, you have, money that you have, money that you are keeping somewhere, it's not your money, somebody else's money. Someday, whether it's in church yeah. or the hospital <laughs> or your kids, they'll collect that money from you. It's money that you spend that you have. So we invest our money, mm -hmm. we spend on the ecosystem, on a company that creates that money, yeah. and we spend on our own experience as people. Mm -hmm. We enjoy it, we pay ourselves well when we yeah. have money, we travel, we see the world, because your eyes are the window to your heart, and we expand. But what success means to me is love. Oh, wow. I believe, and I'm striving, Mm -hmm. to love myself every day, mm -hmm. to love what I do every day. I think when you find a perfect rhythm mm -hmm. of loving what you do every day and love yourself every day, you'll be successful. Because that means that you get up every day, okay, every day is a lifetime. lifetime. It does not matter whether 
is bright or dark. Mm -hmm. Once you love yourself yeah. and you love what you do, mm -hmm. you respect what people say. Why they throw so at you, they insult you, they call you yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. You live in your own bubble, your own world. At the end of my life, I want to wear some glasses and meet God. I say, God, I leave it. You lived it. My terms. I don't feel like this is an interview. I feel like we're having a conversation. And I love the fact that you just said success means love to you. I've, this is the first time I'm interviewing someone and hearing this. And that is very deep and powerful. Thank you so much. Thank I you. am more than humbled to have you on the show.